Thank you. Well, welcome to the Crawford County Historical Society. And they, it, as we get approach the holiday season, we like to, um, one thing that I'd like to say is one thing we're thankful for is, is all of you and your interest in not just some of our history, not just your own personal family history, but all of our history as Crawford, or as, as either people who were born and raised in Crawford County, people who may have moved here later on, um, people who may be visiting friends and family, or people who may have moved away and and but have roots here. So we, we cannot thank you enough. And I, at this time, would like to introduce Dr. Arvindia P. Dixon. Dr. Dixon has been a um, a force for good in this community for yes. decades, yeah. um, as, as many of you may know. And when I say for decades, I was born in 1986, and in 1988, Dr. Dixon was putting together this wonderful manuscript. <laughs> uh, so what I'm saying here is from, from the medieval ebony genealogy to, um, way back when to as recently as this being a major player in the um, Martin Luther King Jr. Scholarship Fund, and even the time capsule a couple hundred feet that way um, within the last year or two. So, I mean, it's it's there are people in this community who leave their mark, and we are glad you are continuing to leave yours. So at this time, because what, a nice what more of an introduction can I give? I will turn it over to Dr. Dixon who will be presenting, and I, I didn't go into the history of this publication, I will let you do so, because you were there, hands-on, writing the research cards. Um, so Dr. Dixon, Amidville, Geneal or Ebony Genealogy of Sorts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, thank you for coming. It's, it's such a pleasure to see each of you and to review Meadville Ebony Genealogy of Sorts. I am, I am really most grateful that Mr. Sherrod worked with Mayor Kinder and me in reviving this book, a book that traces the beginning of African Americans in Meadville, Pennsylvania. And it is simply wonderful for us to have with us today, first of all, Mr. Michael Presta, the son of Mrs. Dietra Presta, the co-author of the book. Michael, will you stand? Yeah. Well, I take the time to acknowledge my, we, my dear sister, Danielle, because she's actually the one that actually did work on the book. I did not. And, and, uh, and Michael, Michael, Michael played for us his famous, uh, some of his famous uh, selections from the saxophone prior to our gathering, so we thank him for that. Okay. And we have with us, oh my goodness, Danielle Pester, the daughter of Mrs. Teacher Pester. Danielle, will you stand? And her husband, David, with, is with us. David, where are you? Okay. And another person who was instrumental in the writing of this <coughs> book is Harrison Dixon, my son. Stand up, Harrison. <laughs> and Danielle is joining us by Zoom from Colorado. Yeah. She is the other daughter. Yeah. Deidre yeah. is joining us. So she is the other daughter of, uh, of Deidre. So let's welcome her. <laughs> so now, uh, uh, Danielle, how old were you when you helped us with this book? When did we? When did you start writing it? In 1988. 88. So I was 10 years old. 10 years old. Harrison, um, how old were you? I have no idea. Oh. <laughs> well, that's Harrison. I'll tell you. And how old? How old was? How old was Dee Dee was eight. Eight years old. I'm telling you. Okay, so we're just so delighted you're here. Um, and uh, and I want to to say that Reverend Reverend Melissa Burnett, my dear friend, will be assisting me today with a slide presentation. So thank you. So we'll get started. Uh, as you see the cover slide, so we will go on to slide three. Okay. So, 
we started out serving the, the Meadville Bicentennial uh, Publication Committee really piqued my curiosity. And uh, I'm not sure how, how we were all chosen to, to be on this committee, but I remember Mrs. Brown, who was also on this committee. Some of you may remember her. Uh, so I asked, you know, when we talked about the publication, and nothing was mentioned about African Americans. Well, 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 I wanted to know, why don't we include African Americans in the early history of Meadville? And of course, the first <coughs> answer I got was, blacks had nothing to do with the history of Meadville. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, I just only said, well, may I work on the answer to this question? <laughs> <laughs> So the question took me, though, in several directions. First of all, I expressed my concern to the local NAACP chapter about getting the research done in time to be considered as a bicentennial production. In other words, I, I just said all of this, and I said, oh my goodness, how's it going to be done? <laughs> so, so, so then Mrs. Dietrich Presta, secretary of the NAACP, said, well, I'll help you. Uh, and we got permission from the Crawford County Historical Society to study its resources. The first breakthrough came when Robert Elsevitz, the curator, gave us access to all the early records about Meadville and all the cemetery records. Several local blacks assisted us by granting us interviews, sharing family and community pictures, and providing leads. Deidre Preston, Danielle Preston, and Harrison D. Dixon III were taught how to do source cards. <laughs> and I want you to know when we got to this point, I said to Deidre, how are we going to do all of this? We have to see about the children after school. We have to do Deidre said, well, I'll just teach them how to help us. <laughs> and if you know Deidre, she meant it. <laughs> she actually taught them how to do source cards. And they had to write correct. If they didn't, she said, do them over. <laughs> so you, you see where they are today, thanks to Deidre. <laughs> OK, there were some citizens who worked very closely with us. They included Mrs. Emma Jean Allen, Mrs. Irma Brown, Mrs. Jenny Lee Carter, Mr. Horace Chen, Mrs. Margaret Chen, Harrison D. Dixon, Jr., Kenneth Lucas, Mrs. Marion Lucas, Mrs. Cecil Overton, Mrs. Mabel Shears, and Mr. Wellington. Mr. Wellington was the manager of the Meadville Tribune. Uh, and some of you know these names mm -hmm. and knew them. So they were wonderful. They, they, they would see us any time of night, any time of day, because they wanted to make sure that this publication happened. And it wouldn't have ha would, would not have happened without them. Our technological resources were typical of the 1980s. That, that was certainly the lack of ancestry tools. We mainly did handwritten notes. Oh, thank goodness for Dietra again. She could write. All her handwriting was marvelous. We tape recorded interviews and transcribed the tapes by writing. We had a typewriter. However, it was only useful for final copies. We used an old-fashioned copy of heaven. Do you remember those old-fashioned? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Everybody goes like this. Everybody goes like this. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And of course, we had countless and countless of source copies. <coughs> Once we accomplished the research, and we lived in, 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 the, in, the, in the historical society. I, I mean, day and night. We ate here. We, sometimes we went to sleep here. So we, we just really uh, immersed ourselves in the, in the data. So the first section is 1880 to 1840. I, and that's the post-revolutionary America period. The, first of all, the 1800 census shows the existence of slaves in Meadville, Crawford, in Crawford County. Free blacks began to migrate to Meadville as early as 1880. And if you have your book, and, and you will turn to page 
uh, page one of the book. You will see that the 1800 census signed by Judge David Mead reflects the existence of slaves in Meadville, Crawford County. James Freeman owned one slave. William Davis, a farmer in Meadville, in Mead Township, had three slaves. Court records show that William Davis returned to the clerk of court of said county, one female mulatta child called Dinah, born on the 25th day of April last of his Negro woman, Vine, sworn and certified filed, filed October 28, 1802. Then, if you just go down a little bit, and, and I'll highlight some of these, you will find that, uh, let, let's, let's look at the, the next slide, and then I can go back to the text. Okay. Uh, go down to where you see White own, owned a tannery that he built in 1806 or 1807 on the terrace north of the residence of Heidi Cooper, mm -hmm. who was an attorney. Mm -hmm. Alexander McIntyre also had slaves. Alexander McIntyre, innkeeper of Meadville, Crawford County, returns to the clerk of the peace of said county, one female Negro child called Mary Ann, born of his Negro woman, Sarah, on or before the 25th of August last, whom he purchased a Rufus Reed of Erie, which child had to serve until 25 years of age, sworn and certified, filed January 30th, 1804. Okay. Uh, in, in spite, you know, in spite of slavery, free blacks began to migrate to Meadville as early as the 1800s. Now, it is impossible to identify blacks who migrated to Meadville because the census from 1800 to 1840 did not give the names of slaves or children by the white man and Negro women. Only white males, white females, and foreigners not naturalized are recorded. The 1840 census shows the number of colored persons in Meadville. There were 101 males and 74 females. As late as 1865, there was evidence that slavery still existed. So if you will turn to uh, page two, about the third paragraph, it reads, the first citizen who owned slaves held out as long as possible. As late as 1865, there was evidence that slavery still existed in Meadville. In the, in the December 24, 1831 edition of the Crawford Weekly Messenger, there appeared the following notice, for sale. The time and service of a colored boy who is 12 years old and has 16, 16 years to serve, a good constitution and disposition. Purchases are referred for terms and further particulars to attorney Robert L. Porter. In, in early 1835, the Anti-Slavery Society was organized. And you know, what? but what if the 1830 census had included blacks in Meadville? I, I just want to share one what if. So go to page three. Had the 1830 census included blacks, that would have appeared the names of Richard and Robert Henderson. Richard and Robert Henderson came to Meadville in 1824 as free men. Along with their sister and brother Edward, they had left Hagertown, Maryland, where they were born slaves and children of slaves. Richard was born in 1801 and was 15 when he left Hagertown. 
Little is known about the sister who died while they traveled the Jefferson route of the Underground Railroad, which started in Maryland and extended to Belafonte, Grampian Hills, Ponsatawney, Brookville, and points west and north. Prior to coming to Meadville, the Henderson brothers had lived in Belafonte for six years, where they obtained their freedom under Pennsylvania law. Robert was only in Meadville for, for a short time when he decided to move to Brookville, Pennsylvania, where he opened a barber shop, as Richard did in Meadville. The brother Edward went north to Canada to live. And as you know, those Hendersons are instrumental in the founding of Bethel AME Church. The second section of the book is, 1850, is, is the 1850 census with biographical notes. It was in the 1850 census that the first time there appeared the names of blacks and descriptions of their household. James Butler worked for William Reynolds at the Baldwin Reynolds house. So if you would turn to page six, Let's hear about the Butlers. Uh, a black family headed by James Butler, who was 38 years old and was born in Virginia, served as a laborer in Meadville where he owned real estate valued at $800. His wife, Susan, was 31 years old. They had three children, Caroline Butler, 11, Helen Butler, six, Margaret Butler too. The wife was also born in Richmond, Virginia, and the children were born in, in Pennsylvania. James and Susan were born on a plantation owned by an English family named Stewart. James served as butler and Susan as maid for the family. <clears throat> One day when they were visiting with some friends, they were approached by a white Canadian who was working on the Underground Railroad. Susan dressed as a man so that she would not be recognized when they escaped. Before they left the plantation, they changed their names to Butler because James had worked as a butler on the plantation. <laughs> their escape was wonderful. It was successful. And they made it to Meadville in 1830. They were among the first black families to settle in Meadville. Slave hunters followed the butlers to Meadville, but were unable to recognize James because he looked like a white man. Susan, who was darker, was kept hidden in the cellar of the home of William Reynolds, an abolitionist. He was later employed by William Reynolds, and the Butler family became very active where? In Bethel, Bethel A.M.E. Church. My goodness. And, by the way, I did work uh, several years ago with Mrs. Wiederspan when she was, she was our tour guide at the Baldwin Reynolds house. And now there is a, a plaque in Baldwin Reynolds that talks about Mr. Butler being the, the black person who worked in Baldwin Reynolds. Why didn't So sometimes we get there for sure. Okay. We could cut, we could, 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 we could really clearly see how blacks earned their living. Black men were laborers, shoemakers, barbers, husters, bellboys, domestic servants, cooks, and porters. Women were waitresses, domestic servants, cleaning women, and washerwomen. So now the third section of our book. Uh, this, the third section is the 1860 census with biographical notes. At this time, the nation is in the third year of the Civil War. President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation in, in 1863. Well, we see black and mulatto families with the heads of households now 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old, some of even 60 years old. We see many blacks living in what was called Fifth Ward. By 1878, black roots were like spider webs. So let's, let's turn to page 18 and see what was said about that. <coughs> it's in the 
bottom of page 18, in 1878, black roots were like spider webs, intricate, blending with those of other Meadville citizens. The Cassie family, the Ruda family, the Hemsley family, the Henderson family, the Harrison family, the Massey family, the Curtin family, the Smith family, the Clifford family, all kept growth, kept become, becoming a part of a great community. And then the, the, the next section, and that's our final section, the fourth section is just ordinary people making for an extraordinary future. And this was, this was actually the time when, when, we did, when we ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> we got a chance to interview some of the citizens. You know, we tape recorded their, their interviews, we, we wrote them up, and, uh, and, and, then, and then we stopped. So those that, those that we were able to, uh, to really talk about are, are listed in, starting on page 20. Uh, we, we talk about the Chin family. We talk about the Overton family, the Barner family, the Lucas family, and so on. Uh, and, and then, of course, we get the book published. And uh, thank goodness for Mr. Wellington from the Meadville Tribune. Uh, he was able to, uh, to decide what went into the publication. So the works that Dietra and I did were included in there. And he talks about the interlocking that goes on and that went on with our history. Uh, that, a copy of that volume of the Meadville Tribune is, is in the other room. So, uh, so you'll get a chance to see what that original volume looked like. So, what are some implications for further studies? Because that's what happens when you write something. And where does it go from here? Okay. So, our book, as you know, is mostly genealogical in nature. However, African American genealogy is difficult because slaves were considered property, shutting them out of activities that generated records on which much genealogical research is based. But in spite of this, there were ways records were kept about slaves and blacks. Now, now how you get to it is, is another story. Uh, there is the opportunity now for ancestry updates using a plethora of, of ancestry tools. African Americans can go to Ancestor Quest, My Heritage, Gramps, Root Magic, Ancestry Mormons, the Mormons have a, the best yeah. collection in the world. So you can find all of us there. <laughs> Family Tree, DNA Test, Freeman's Bureau that has records of our soldiers, our nurses, our Civil War veterans, you name it. And I did, I did put on the table to my right, uh, when, you, when you come in for the book sign, I put a copy of, of, of some of those tools that were helpful when I had to do my family research. And, and it is difficult. It takes a lot of years and a lot of time. Uh, perhaps it is time for us to organize a genealogical society where we may learn how to use the ancestry tools in discovering our heritage and tracing the families that are recognized in Meadville genealogy of sorts. Someone or interview teams may continue to interview African American families about their histories and find a way to present and publish them to tell their stories. African Americans should become involved in the Crawford County Historical Society. I'm sure there's a lot we can do here. <laughs> and we, we all need to work toward the interlocking of histories of all ethnic groups because of the richness what we all bring to make Meadville this beloved community. Amen. And uh, I, I would like to make some acknowledgments. I'm sure I will forget somebody. But first of all, I won't forget all of you in attendance today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
uh, Reverend Melissa Burnett, Armstrong Cable, Mr. Mike Crowley, uh, Harrison Dixon III, Mrs. Jan Filippa, Mrs. Yeah. Cassandra Gonzalez. I think that, is that spelled right? Did I misspell Z, 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 Z. Z. I missed that Z. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, at Mrs. Uh, Marsha Metcalf, Ms. Danielle Preston, Ms. Deidre Preston, Reverend Sarah Rancolata, Mr. Lee Scandanera, Mr. Kevin Tomini, and the Meville Tribune. And, uh, and I, I tell you, without, without all of the help and support of each of you, this, this would not have happened. And then I want to make special thanks to uh, Mr. Sherrod. Believe it or not, he used to work for me when I was uh, director of uh, what, what was that? What was that? Where are you? Uh, Where? You were academic support what? services at Edinburgh. That's right. <laughs> academic support services. <laughs> so, so, so we go way back. And, uh, <laughs> and, and by the way, special thanks to him and to Mayor uh, uh, Kinder, who I'm sure sort of spurred this on. And we appreciate that so much. So, so now we're, we're at the point where, um, oh, I do want to mention one thing. When you see the, the, the display of the, the tools that can be used for the ancestry of African Americans, you will see one family tree, the first family tree that, that we did, and, and, and my mom was responsible for that. You know, I went on and I, I, I joined this club where you go online, and I know nothing about the computer. But anyway, I, I went on the computer and, and we did, we started the family tree. And the first time I, I got the family tree together, my mom said, and my mom lived with me, she was my best friend. She lived until she was 98 years old, wow. bless her heart. But she said to me, oh, you, you, you've done that first family tree? Take it downtown, get it framed. <laughs> And, and you have to do that. So I always listen to my mom, so I took it downtown, and I got the, fa the first family tree framed. And it has grown and it's grown. So you'll get a chance to look at the first family tree. Because that tree maker helped me to do that, and to, to locate uh, my family, so to speak. And of course, we took the DNA test, all those things you can do to find out who you are. Mm -hmm. So that's wonderful. So now, I'm going to stop. Do you have any questions that I may answer? Hmm. When yeah. is the book signing? Well, the book signing is, is as soon as we are we're done. <laughs> and the book signing is in the room. And uh, and before we end, we're going to ask uh, we're going to ask Danielle and Harrison to go into the room where the book signing will take place. And you can just come right there, and we will sign your book. Yes. Uh, will there be more uh, publications reprinted? Uh, Beyond what you have today, uh, Miss, Mr. Chair, this is this is your question. I think he has some. Yeah, he has. I think he has some printed today. Oh, the, we have a couple hundred here today. We have a couple hundred today. So if anyone wants one, there's there are plenty to go around. Okay. All right. And uh, and there were copies. The copies still at Baldwin Reynolds House. I know they were doing Trees of Christmas. During Trees of Christmas, we're pretty much closed down except for special so, events. So, all right. So mostly here, and then I've, I've reached out to a couple other places, and I'll make sure that we get something to the paper and such as they become available in other areas. All right. All right. So they will be all over town. Okay. <laughs> all right. Any more questions? Yes. I watch Finding Your Roots every once in a while. Of course, that would be the Cadillac of DNA research. I'm sure you would envy being able to be on that because they do such intense research. But I was always taken aback. Of course, they hit celebrities. and um, But every celebrity that has a, a black background, you know, has, has slavery or it stops somewhere. Very rare can they go beyond mm -hmm. that part of it. And it's just so obvious, you know, how lacking the information is so digging like you have is commendable thank you so much and that and that did help we do have to go further as you said than what is available and i and i know how we ended up we we knew exactly where our our slave parents came from and some of us have been able to visit the country hmm. so we've been able to go to west oh, africa nice. and uh, yes and it has made quite a difference yes mm -hmm. yes so thank you did you get an emotional response from the person who told you that black people didn't have anything to do with the family? Uh, well, that's that's a, that's quite a question, and, and I'm sure 
I'm sure Josh could help me with this, but that person went to great length to make sure, even after it was published, that mm -hmm. that the community was not aware of it. Mm -hmm. And to yes, so and uh, and and you know, I, I think I think each time we we face those battles, mm -hmm. we grow too. Yeah. You know, and and look at today. After all those years, mm -hmm. the book is revived. Mm -hmm. yeah. So things happen, <laughs> yes. And that lady has long since, you know, gone by the wayside. <laughs> so, so we, yes, we just do our best and work together. And it's just, this is what makes this a beautiful community. Any more questions? Maybe I have a question. Um, I think Nina was spot on the Underground Railroad. Yes. My brother-in-law, John Shields, was uh, part of the John Brown Heritage Society, and I remember uh, then having a picture of him next to a fireplace in one of the old homes on Terrace Street. Yeah. Um, is that correct? That that is absolutely correct. And and speaking of the John Brown Society, uh, uh, it, it was most needed here, and and I'm sure it still exists. They need some newer members, but the John Brown Society, and my husband was a member of that society mm -hmm. too. Ken Williams and mm -hmm. Tom Church, and yes. So, so much has been done in reference to the Underground Railroad. And then there's the work that connected with John Brown. Mm -hmm. So, yes. My goodness. What about um, Frederick Douglass's family and the younger Frederick, or was it Frederick Douglass? That was Frederick the, Douglass, yes. The third that yes. was here as well. Like, he didn't, did you guys work with him at all, or with his um, uh, Fred, Fred Douglas did not believe in, in uh, talking too much okay. about his history, okay. but we certainly did talk with him. Yeah. And, uh, and once Fred died, in fact, there was a story written. There's a story written on a lot of these people. They're in different places. Yeah. That, that's another thing we need to talk about. But after Fred died, his, his family let the house go. We, we didn't know about that until they lost the house. So we're at a standstill in reference to Fred Douglas. Okay. But that's a good question. Are you aware of any homes in, that are still standing in Meadville that were part of the Underground Railroad? Well, one, it, one has disappeared, but we are aware of the Hendersons quite a bit. Yes. And, and, uh, the and, there, still there. and there are, no, not, okay. no, the house is not still there. And uh, there's a house. There's a house down, you know that house, if I can tell you where that house is, <laughs> that house that has all these funny different, yeah, right? yeah. That, that house is suspected to have been a part of the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. so, so a lot of history needs to be pulled together. Mm -hmm. We need to, need to work on it. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? This just reminds me that it's been talked over and over at, uh, on NAACP and members of the local chapter about doing a walking tour, African American historical walking tour in Meadville. And this just makes me like, we just need to do this. So if you have an interest in that, mention it to me. I'll be in here. And, uh, and you know, I think it's, probably, it's time to act. This is the perfect time to act following all this. So I'd love to help see that go through. So. Thank, thank you, Ms. Elizabeth. Go ahead. Okay. Any more questions? Well, you yes. know where this question will come from, Mindy, and that is an outreach to the schools and the school curriculum. Uh, well, you know what? <laughs> that is an excellent question. Uh, one, as soon as this, this, the, uh, the uh, news release came out about this book, one of the teachers in the middle school immediately contacted the director of curriculum and instruction and said, I want copies of this book because we want to integrate it into our classroom. Hmm. And then the next thing, yeah. uh, it was pointed out that there is a My City curriculum okay. that we didn't know anything about. That's, that's, that's here. And uh, I did talk, I, I did, and I sent an email to the director of curriculum instruction to see if there could be some follow through on that and to ask the teachers to review the book to see if they could use it. Well, there was silence. I have heard nothing since. Okay. But 
but that's an excellent question. And, uh, and, and I know when we were doing the, the survey, uh, the NACP, NACP survey, many students, not just African Americans, Asian Americans, yeah, uh, uh, different, different, different nationalities, Chinese Americans said, it's, the, the history is not about us. It should be about all of us. So, so this is important, very important. Any, any more questions? Yes. Dr. Dixon, um, I, I'm just going to make a quick statement. I'm not sure. If, uh, I, I grew up with Harrison, right? And, and um, We're not going to talk about our ages. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I just want everyone to understand that um, Dr. Dixon was like, she might as well have been the president at that point, right? That's how we, we felt about her, right, when we were growing up. Um, and I just, from the bottom of my heart, want to thank you for your continued work, for your continued demanding that seat at the table, right? Not taking, we don't have history here, right? Because um, you not only gave us women that looked like us someone to fear, right? Not because of spankings, but because of that beautiful mind that you have and that, that work ethic, but someone to work towards. And um, uh, without you, um, I don't think a lot of us that look like you would would have the confidence to stand up and demand our seat mm -hmm. and demand that we be heard. Mm -hmm. So, um, I again, that's a thank you from the, the most bottom of my heart mm -hmm. um, for just being here and being alive and <laughs> continuing this work and understanding that this is the beginning. Mm -hmm. She demanded that this be printed. She did the work herself. But there is more history, and that is, I think, what you're yeah. saying. Yes. Um, there's more history here in Meville. Mm -hmm. There's more that we need to do, and um, I think it's our duty, and and uh, for you and for the, the people here in town, um, it needs to be done, and we need to make it clear that we're going to do it, mm -hmm. and we will uh, not settle for anything less than everything being written, mm -hmm. and to know everything. So thank you, Dr. Dixon, for just mm -hmm. being here. And that was from our first woman mayor. <laughs> <laughs>